and then also anatomy and physiology. So uh, in comparison to sport management, you're going to see a lot more science-based courses in kinesiology than you would in, say, the sport management curriculum. So you'll take things like nutrition, exercise and sport instructional methods, strength and conditioning, and then you also have to complete some kind of practicum or field experience. So if you take the degree, you can get a degree in kinesiology, and then a concentration means you take extra courses on top of the degree and the concentration, you have to have the kinesiology degree to do this concentration. So it just means you're picking a particular career path to get additional information. So our fitness specialist concentration would prepare you for exercise science graduate degrees, uh, clinical exercise physiology, athletic training, strength and conditioning. So if you're someone interested in going into athletic training or strength conditioning, uh, you would select this concentration. So these are additional courses on top of our degree that you would take in order to help prepare you for those particular careers. So at the end of our degree, you would be prepared to take exams to become a certified strength and conditioning specialist uh, a certified exercise physiologist. And many positions uh, within the field require that you have a degree and a certification. So that's something that if you are you know, looking at certain types of jobs, you have to realize that they also require on top of a degree, uh, extra certifications. And our program is aligned to those certifications. So the other concentration uh, that you can choose is health and physical education pedagogy. So this particular concentration has an emphasis on working with individuals ages 5 to 18. This can be either in a sport coaching, youth programs, um, in the school setting or in the community setting. So if you're interested in being a coach or a sport and fitness instructor, uh, this particular concentration would be what you would select. And here you can see these are the additional courses that you would take on top of the degree. So each of these is essentially broken down by content, but also by age. So elementary physical education methods, how would you coach or teach uh, to youth ages five to 12? And then secondary would be uh, ages 12 to 18. How do we coach or teach physical activity to them? Adaptive physical education. So in this concentration, you're getting uh, internships out in the field, whether it's with coaches or with teachers, in each of these particular areas. And then if you want to become a teacher, that requires additional courses. So if you want to teach in public schools, and this could be in any state, so you, can, you would get a teacher certificate for the state of Washington. Um, and also just an idea as far as if you are interested in becoming, say like a high school coach, uh, typically you know, those are also individuals who are teachers within the schools. So if you want to become a certified teacher, there are an additional 37 credits that you must take in order to uh, be certified as a teacher. So the end of that is a student teaching experience where you're in a school setting for an entire semester, uh, teaching either health or and or physical education, either at the elementary or secondary level. So when you think about kinesiology and, for example, exercise physiology, uh, we do have a lab. So within the lab, you're running exercise fitness testing. So here an example of working with VO2 max. Um, and then in the anatomy labs, working with microscopes. So those are just some examples of what uh, our classrooms look like when you're taking the labs. So any uh, questions specifically to kinesiology that I could answer for any of you? This is, feel free to unmute if you want or throw them in the chat. Um, and then once we hear from, from Ryan and you have questions afterwards, we'll, we'll also have time for Q&A there. But feel free to ask your questions here. All right, Dr. Turcotte, if you want to go through sport management, and then again, if you come up with any questions, you can just type them into the chat. All right, you got it. So I, I can't share my screen right now. I don't know if I'm having Zoom difficulties or what. So we got that going for us. 
Um, <laughs> um, let's see, Dr. Barta, could you could you open that sport management PowerPoint? Worst case, if not, I can I can just talk us through it. But it would be nice if we could show them something. Um, I can also send this to maybe to Nathan to see if he could open this, but he might have access. So sorry, everybody. Yeah. We got a couple. There we go. Dr. Bart is on it. Yep. Let me go to. Uh... That's why she's she's one of the best colleagues in the business, right? Uh -huh. But anyways, as she's as she's kind of finding it there, and if we can't find right it, here? Way, here we go. Perfect. Yep. Okay. There we go. And you can just um, hit present, and I think go to the yeah. You can go to the next slide, even. Okay. So um, yeah, my name is Dr. Turcott, and um, again, I'm the uh, program director for our, our master's program in sport administration, and also running the undergrad. Not running, but I'm, I'm teaching in the undergrad program. But sport management is, is, a, is a booming industry. It, it's a booming discipline in, in higher education right now. Um, students wanna work in sports. Um, students wanna work on the business side of sports. Uh, I, I really like that we, are, we really team up with kinesiology with uh, Dr. Barda's program because you really work with them you know, day in and day out. And, and, and whether you wanna be an athletic director, you wanna be in sports media, you wanna be a sports journalist, uh, you want to be, um, uh, you know, a, a college coach, you want to be a sports agent, um, you want to work in sports analytics, it kind of goes on and on and on in terms of things you can do working on the business side of sport, working on the management side. But again, we work a lot with kinesiology, again, working with athletic trainers, working with um, exercise physiologists, working with, with physical therapists. So it's, it's really unique in, in, in that our program is small enough and we get to work together in a lot of different classes. So um, again, as you can see in the bullet points here, you know, Gonzaga is, 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 is a great place to, to go to school because the classes are small. We know all of our students' names. Um, we know where they're from. Um, you know, we get, we get a chance to kind of know a lot about, uh, um, you know, the sports in their area and kind of what they're looking to do. And, um, you know, a lot of students like basketball, but there's a lot of other mixes as well. A lot of students want to work in soccer. We have a lot of students work in baseball, going to work for the Mariners. So, you know, our conversations and our class projects are really catered towards really learning from each other in a lot of different sporting contexts and learning from, you know, different sports, not just focusing in on one sport, but learning from other sports as well. So um, kind of some curricula that we have, you know, obviously sports promotion and sponsorship are the big ones. We have classes that are focused on just promotions and marketing. Um, we also get into kind of to the legal aspects of sports. We have you know, um, sports law uh, specialist, Dr. Bailey, who is a full-time professor in our department, who teaches, uh, does a great job, really kind of getting you acquainted with kind of the legal side of sports, ethical sides of sports. Um, Dr. Barda also teaches sports psychology, which is kind of a crossover, I would say, of sport management, kinesiology. It's, it's, it's a great addition to our program. And then facility management is, is, a, is a new big one, an up and coming one uh, here in Spokane. For those who, who do not know, uh, we have a couple of really recent developments in Spokane. We have um, a, a facility called the Spokane Podium, which is an indoor track and field uh, um, center facility. And we'll be hosting the U.S. Indoor Track and Field Championships um, I believe in 2024. Uh, we also have a USL, a USL soccer team coming um, in 2022 and 2023, which will be played at a brand new stadium in downtown Spokane. And we're going to have an active role in that, really working with that organization, USL Spokane, with kind of putting the team together, putting their brand together, putting their you know uh, season ticket packages together, their jersey sponsorships. So that's a re something really unique that I don't, I don't think a lot of schools can do. So that's something that's really kind of, you know, fun for students kind of looking in the future for the next couple of years is, is kind of looking stuff at that, looking um, at that aspect. You can go back really quick if you don't mind, um, Nicole, if, if, if you're able to. Yeah. Uh, and so also sports and fitness in the digital age is, is another class kind of looking at sports media, um, things that come with that, with with kind of analyzing media, looking at the jobs and journalism. Also, every college athletic department in the country has um, sports information directors where, where you're doing a lot of media work, a lot of statistics, a lot of work on websites, a lot of social media work, um, a, a lot of broadcasting. And so we do a lot of prep with that and our students find a lot of positions in that as well. Sports and activity in a diverse society, really focusing on 
uh, kind of sports sociology and, and making sure that we're safeguarding sport, making sure it is a multicultural uh, space, making sure that we are, um, you know, um, making a voice for di having diverse voices in sports. And so we, we get a lot of kind of diverse perspectives and, and international perspectives in that class. And then we do have two internships that all students do. A lot of them do stuff locally in Spokane. They work, they'll work with Gonzaga Athletics. They'll work with our minor league baseball team, the Spokane Indians. Uh, we have a minor league hockey team, um, uh, the Spokane Chiefs, but also students will go home in the summer. A lot of students from California, Washington State, even over on the East Coast, they'll go home and work with professional teams, um, you know, college teams, uh, whatever it may be, and find internships. So in this, uh, looking at the bottom here, you can see it's 128, uh, 128 credits total to graduate. We'll go to the next one here. Thank you again, Dr. Barter, for doing this. So uh, kind of a list here of our internships and kind of where we have placed students, um, also job placements. You know, we, we, we really have a good record of getting students in the door with internships, and then down the road, they end up getting jobs with these, with these organizations, universities, institutions. Uh, kind of looking at this photo here, we do have Hoop Fest at, in Spokane. This is the largest three on three basketball tournament in the world. Um, something that we kind of hang our hats on with really uh, getting students, you know, on the ground and really kind of seeing everything that that it takes to set this this tournament up. Uh, we haven't had it for the past two years because of the the pandemic, um, but we also have a uh, Bloomsday, which is one of the biggest road races in the United States. Um, and as I already told you, we have USL Spokane coming, and uh, another another list here of, of other universities, um, other big events, Super Bowls, um, you know, big college football uh, bowl games. Um, it kind of goes on and on. I mean, honestly, if I if if I listed every internship and job that we've had recently, I don't think um, we, we'd be out of time. So, um, but I can just tell you, it is it is professional. It is minor league. It is college. It is high school. It is it is international. Um, we really are all over the map in terms of where we're placing our students with jobs and internships. So this is kind of our full time faculty. Um, we have myself here on the far right. Dr. Jimmy Smith is more kind of the marketing. Um, kind of consumer behavior uh, person. Dr. Karen Rickle is our department chair. She really focuses kind of on um, recreation and sport and wellness and um, kind of sports administration. And then Dr. Bailey is kind of our sports um, sports in law expert. Uh, we have a great team along with Dr. Barda, along with Dr. Bo Burris, who's on the exercise physiology side. And we also have a new lecturer um, in, in on the exercise side with uh, Eric Pittman. And we also have quite a few um, adjuncts as well, kind of coming from the Spokane area, but also all over the United States. We have a couple from Upper State New York um, and elsewhere. So um, it's a great team. It's a great program. It's a great time to be a Zag. And um, honestly, I don't know if there's a better place to study sport management than Gonzaga, given uh, you, you are in a smaller school, but you also get a taste of the big time athletics. And you're also going to be in a city that is that is really kind of exploding population wise, but also exploding from a sport um, industry side. So um, thank you all for listening. I hope we get a couple questions and I would love to, to interact and uh, talk with some of you. Thank you so much. So I did see a question in the chat. How many years does it take to complete the kinesiology program if you had a concentration? So all of our, regardless of the concentration or even the teacher certification route, you can all complete in, in four years. So um, the only difference is, uh, would be if you were coming in uh, with your AA degree, for example, and you only wanted to finish in two years, you couldn't do our concentration. It takes a minimum of three years uh, to do the concentration. But if you come in and you already know as a freshman, this is what you wanna do, you can easily get done and have an additional credits, uh, the fitness specialist concentration. You could actually even do both health and physical education pedagogy and fitness specialist concentration. It's possible to get both of those, um, but it's not possible to get both of those and teacher certification. So we do have a bridge to a master's in teaching. So you could actually get fitness specialist concentration, health and physical education pedagogy, and then go into our master's in teaching and in five years, leave with a master's in teaching and be able to teach health and physical education in the schools and be a certified strength and conditioning coach. So your options for the kind of careers that you would want uh, to get are, are just huge with our program, the way that we have set it up to be able to help you really get into any career within the kinesiology related side. 
Um, and then the internship application process, uh, and I can just speak to this on either side. Uh, really, we kind of leave it up to you. You're required to do internships on the kinesiology side. You have to do one on sport management. You have to do two, uh, but you are required to find your own internship. We do um, help you and say, here are some examples of internships, but it's really student led as far as your internships. On the sport management side, typically you begin your internship your junior year um, towards the end or your senior year. And we want it that you have already taken a number of classes uh, to do your internship in. In kinesiology, you would do it your senior year, your internship. Yeah, and kind of talking on the sport management side, very similar to what Dr. Barta said, we, we leave it up to you, but we also give you a lot of recommendations. I mean, we are hearing from organizations almost weekly looking for interns. interns. And so, you know, if you want something in Spokane, we're going to find you something. There, there's no question. Again, whether it's with HoopFest, Bloomsday, Spokane Chiefs, Spokane Indians, USL Spokane, Spokane Podium. Um, or also even kind of more of the recreational route if you're looking to go into, you know, the YMCA or, or Park and Rec, those options are there as well. But again, if you're from San Francisco, if you're from LA, if you're from Texas, you know, chances are you're going to go home in the summer and, and we can um, accommodate that. And so we would just need to meet with, with the person who would be your supervisor, make sure that you're going to get enough hours, make sure you're, that you're getting the right experience. Um, it's, it's not too difficult in terms of making sure that that does fit, uh, but we do need kind of some communication with that supervisor. And those are usually done similar to kind of what Dr. Barta said at the end of your program. So your junior, senior year are the times when you're going to be doing uh, your internships, a lot of times the summer before your senior year. And you'll be getting a lot of, um, as I said, um, kind of internship offers and internship opportunities. I mean, almost, I would say, weekly, if not bi-weekly, uh, seeing a lot of different offerings. So we kind of save those for, for the end of the program. Uh, but again, we're, we're very flexible with kind of what you want to do and where you want to go. Um, we also, right now I'm working with a couple of students who are looking to go to Europe and do some internships in Switzerland um, for this summer. And so, you know, as you can see, very flexible. And uh, again, we just want to make sure it's a good fit and you have a supervisor in place who's giving you some, some good work, um, a good work environment and good work opportunities. So. Um, let's see. I'll go to, to, to Loni's question. I hope I'm saying that right. Loni Thomas. Loni, usually students can get jobs right away. And I'm talking about undergraduate jobs, getting full-time positions right away. Uh, we just had a student uh, get a full-time position with the Mariners working in a season ticket, uh, off, uh, working in a season ticket sales. Uh, we also, you know, I've, I've seen students get jobs in, in media right away, kind of working in social media, uh, working more on the sports um, information side. So it's definitely there. Um, you know, the jobs may, might not be as great, I think, after you get a master's degree or after you build up your experience. But there is a lot of jobs locally in Spokane, also kind of across the country. They really just want you to have a bachelor's degree in sport management. And so um, I would say comparatively, maybe to a business major, um, for someone who wants to work in sports, I think a sports management major is much more attractive. That's maybe me being a little bit biased, uh, but, <laughs> but I think uh, that can be, um, for the most part, it, it is very attractive to sports organizations, minor league teams, even university athletic departments, uh, looking for someone with a bachelor's degree, especially coming from a sports school like Gonzaga. We find a lot of success for students kind of jumping right into the, the industry as soon as they finish the undergraduate program. And I'd like to add to that, that um, oftentimes your internship leads right into a job. So for example, Spokane Indians, um, if you do very well in their internship and they have an open position, they will say, we would want to hire you. I know that also happened for one of my students doing a Bloomsday internship and a position opened up and he was able to take it. So really when you think of your internships, it's like the job interview. Like a lot of organizations want to hire you because of how well you did in your internship. So if they have an open position, it's like you've already moved your way up to the top uh, for that. And then uh, I'll answer Dr. the question. Oh, go Dr. ahead. Dr. Barter, can I just add just some context for students who aren't from our, our area? And I know we talked about it a little bit. Um, it's hard to imagine just how big the organizations of Bloomsday and HoopFest are, right? If you haven't experienced these programs, HoopFest, they say it brings 250 
thousand people to downtown Spokane. The entire city is is shut down the whole downtown area to play three on three basketball. It is a year round organization that does so much good stuff in Spokane. Bloomsday, what is it? 40, 45,000 people run in this. Like, let me say that one more time. 40,000 people run in this 12 K um, in Spokane. And so Spokane's a little unique in, in that it's, it's a big city that has these opportunities um, for internships all over but it's it it's very community based in the organizations and in the in especially sport. This is a really active area, and so I know Ryan talked about um, that new indoor track facility, which is just an awesome thing that's coming. Building a new sports stadium in downtown Spokane. Spokane cares about active sport, um, and so just I just wanted to add that context that when you hear oh. Bloomsday, I'm going to work for a 12K. It's like, no, 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 no. This is this is bigger than I think you might imagine it could be. And Hoop Fest, a three-on-three basketball tournament. I heard um, the executive director doing a, a, a podcast and he was talking about how one year they lost 45 courts because a new building was being built in downtown Spokane. And um, he said 45 courts would be the second largest three-on-three basketball tournament in the country. And, and Hoop Fest has like 400 courts right so like um just adding some context to that and to our area um this is a very active sports physically active area all right i'm gonna let you get back to it i just wanted to add that context yes and, uh you know other organizations too we have parasport of spokane uh which works with uh, individuals with disabilities and they just came back from the tokyo paralympics and we had um silver medalists that were there. So when you think on either kinesiology, sport management side, uh, Parasport of Spokane is known internationally for the work that they do with individuals uh, with disabilities. Um, and so I'll just go on to chat, make sure we cover the questions. Uh, you, we do recommend that majors in sport management get a minor, like it's designed that we highly, highly encourage you to get a minor. In fact, in order to get your 128 credits, you have to take other courses other than just the degree in the core. So for that reason, uh, we do say minor. It can be very difficult to double major in any major. And that's because you have to get a total of 156 credits, which means you have to take on average about 20 credits a semester. So unless you're doing summer school or you transferred in a lot of credits from AP courses, running start, um, we don't recommend a double major, though we have students who currently are double majoring in kinesiology and sport management. Uh, that is possible. It's also possible to major in kinesiology and minor in sport management. So uh, the great thing is Dr. Turcott and I are advisors and all of our other faculty are advisors. So at Gonzaga, you get a lot of our attention. We will advise you. If you say, this is what I want to do, we sit down with you and we work out a program to help you maximize your time in four years here to get the best you know, possible opportunities that you can for your career path. So we map out each semester what courses that you're taking to help make sure that you get the degree that you want. And then skills and traits you find essential to be successful in sport management program. Uh, a few things that come to my mind for either are that you need to be able to meet deadlines. Uh, when you think about sport, right, like sports occur at a certain time on a certain date. And if you don't get your work done before then, right, there's going to be issues. So it's like you need to be punctual. You need to stay on top of things. You need to be someone who communicates well, um, whether it's in writing via email. You need to be checking up on all your deadlines, um, communicating in classes. And so those are some, you know, pretty important traits. Communicator and someone who meets deadlines. And I don't know, I'll let Dr. Chuck yeah, add to that. For sure, yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, I'm seeing a couple of questions about minors. Um, yeah, as Dr. Barta said, we highly recommend it. The best ones or, or the most common ones we get are business, business minor, communications minor, um, even some psychology minors, but really I think communication, uh, broadcast journalism or business are the best. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure, business is probably the best one because there is some things that maybe we don't get into as deeply like accounting, you know, like macro and microeconomics, we definitely hit it from a sports side in the sport management program. 
but getting that business minor just really kind of supplements it well to make sure that you are getting a good understanding for how to stay on top of your books for understanding, you know, economics more from just outside of sports and how it kind of, you know, interacts with society. So those are kind of the three ones that I recommend, but again, you're open to doing stuff like sociology, psychology, um, you know, I mean, even, uh, going somewhere else, we, there's, there's so many minors that are offered, but those are kind of the most common ones. And just kind of going back to uh, Ahmed's question, you know, and I, I totally agree with what Dr. Barta said, but also I would say, I think, you know, just problem solving and critical thinking, those are the biggest skills that we work on. I feel like in my classes is, is really kind of, you know, looking at things critically and trying to solve problems. Like right now, we're, we're working with this USL Spokane team. Um, we're talking with the president. They're going through what colors are we going to be? What's our crest and brand going to look like? How is that going to connect to the community? Um, what is their jersey sponsorship going to be? Um, you know, what are the different pitches going to be? And so we're actually taking a lot of these kind of problems and questions that the organization has, and we're bringing them into our class. And then we're actually communicating back to the president. So we actually are kind of solving some real world problems and really kind of you know, critically thinking about this and trying to see, okay, what, what would be the best colors and, you know, what is the best way to market this team and how does this really um, unify the city and, and resonate with, with members of the Spokane community. So again, I don't think many programs are doing that. And so again, I, I think to I'm at your question, I think critical thinking and problem solving are, the, are two of the bigger ones. But again, we get into everything with communication, as Dr. Barta said, you know, having a business mindset, as she said, meeting deadlines, um, but again, you, you are essentially have customers, you have employees, you're acting like a business. So um, those are some skills that I would, I would definitely recommend. So um, yeah, I, I guess we can go to some other questions or we can go back to Dr. Barta, but I just wanna make sure we got um, to Ahmed's question. And I'll also say like, cause again, there's several questions with minors. You, you will select a minor kind of based upon what specialization you want. So you need to think sport management is pretty broad. Same with kinesiology. Kinesiology has concentrations to help you pick either like a teaching coaching route or more of a science route that's more strength conditioning coach, exercise physiologist. So sport management is very broad. So if you want to focus more on marketing and communications, you would take a minor in that. Or if you want more business, you would take a minor in that. So you just have to think that the minor is really the additional specialization that you would want to get more information in other than just the broad sport management. And sometimes you might not know your minor till, you know, the end of your sophomore year. And then you might take most of those your junior, senior year. And one more thing, I got to give myself a, a little plug here. I'll go back to Nate. Um, but kind of going off what Dr. Barta was saying about the um, Paralympics movement. Uh, so we, we do have a campus in Florence, Italy called Gonzaga in Florence. And I'll be teaching a class there this coming summer which is focused on adaptive sport in a global society. Um, this is different than a normal study abroad course because we actually have a campus in Florence. Uh, Gonzaga has a long history in Italy because of St. Gonzaga it was from, um, from Italy. And so if you go back to the 1700s, um, Gonzaga has a history there. So when, when, when we are in Florence this summer, we'll be there for six weeks. We're gonna be working with a wheelchair basketball team. We're gonna be working with Fiorentina FC, which is one of the best teams um, in the country in Italy. Um, uh, we'll be looking, uh, working with the Italian Basketball Federation, doing a lot of fun and unique things. I also think that there'll be other summers where Dr. Barta will be hopefully teaching in Florence. I think Dr. Bailey, um, Dr. Smith, I, I think this is gonna, my dream is that this is, or my plan is that this will be kind of a, um, a long-term thing. And so I think everyone should so really think about that as it's a great opportunity to go study abroad. But again, this is unique in that Gonzaga has a campus in Italy. And so we're already going this summer. And so I just want to kind of uh, throw, kind of put that in your heads as well as that is a great opportunity that this part, this department is actively offering classes in and um, it's going to start this summer. But again, I see this kind of happening every summer going forward, whether it is kinesiology or sport management. Um, I think, I think that's worth mentioning as well. So um, anyways, Nate, we'll go back to you if you want to uh, jump in here. I'll just, I'll go on to answer. There's another question as far as, um, yes, we do have internships at Gonzaga. Uh, there is an internship to be, to work in the athletic training department if you're with kinesiology. And that does require an application process. Um, you can work in the marketing for Gonzaga's uh, sports media. Um, so you do, you can have internships with Gonzaga. I also just want to share 
again, what Ryan was saying is that you get opportunities at Gonzaga, maybe that you might not get other places. So uh, I recently published a book um, and I know Dr. Churcott is published in a number of, of different books, but I'll just say, uh, this is one of my students on the cover of this book. And within this book are 10 of my other students. So a number of my students are now in a published book that goes out and is used um, in different universities across the nation. Um, and so when you come to Gonzaga, you're working with people who are trying to help you get yourself out there in a number of different ways and be the best professional. Thank you. Um, and Dr. Barter is not joking. One of my favorite uh, rankings for our, our school is the US News Weekly World Report ranking our faculty as, the, as a top 20 faculty for teaching in the entire country. And I think that's no joke. These, these folks work really, really hard for students. They care about teaching and they care about getting you the best resources that you can get. Um, and also, Ryan, if you could take me to Florence, I'll, I'll go work for Fiorentina. I don't mind that. Um, so, hey, you can volunteer, Nate. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. We're, we're out of questions. If y'all want to stick around, feel free. I just want to thank Dr. Barta and Dr. Turcott for, for joining us today. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us and taking time out of your Saturday to, to, to hang out with us at Gonzaga. We have um, a break until 1220. So I encourage y'all to, to log off. I don't know, go do some jumping jacks or get something to eat, right? Um, and then come back and join that same link uh, that we sent you uh, at 1220 for the next step. So mostly, uh, Dr. Barta, Dr. Turcott, thank you for being here today. Um, all students and families, thank you for being here today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Nicole.